Are you serious? Yeah. Come on, I'm trying to promote you. Okay, baby. Hey, what's up, friends? It's JB Webb. I am back, and we are like right up against the end of this series, the JB Webb Show. But again, don't worry. We've already leaked it out there. We're going to continue on as a podcast, so no more AV stuff. But uh, anyway, this episode 99 is uh, incredible. I have admired this uh, artist's work for years now. She's uh, an Orlando fixture. She's really super talented. If you can look at the quality of work um, provided uh, to your eye receptacle through Johanna O'Donnell. It's incredible. And the series she creates, it's incredible. I mean, it's, it's like she has her own little universe and world, and I love it. And uh, we want to we wanna make sure you know about this incredible artist. Um, we're going to learn more about it. But on the phone with me is Johanna O'Donnell. Welcome to our little humble effort here. And how the heck you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, I've had some wine past my lips, uh, so that always uh, <laughs> that always seems to lubricate the good the good times. But um, your work is incredible. I don't know a whole lot about you, and I want to learn um, uh, more about you. And you know, ex parte, so will anyone who's watching this uh, interview. But y- you have such a beautiful, unique, a glorious style. It's it's photorealism at its finest, and then you go. Uh, you know, and you do this whole cat series with uh, three eyes, and you do these cult classic type of images. I just love your stuff. So w- w- let me stop gushing all over here, and uh, <laughs> let's. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your kind of intro to art? When did you start doing art, and maybe kind of go, you know, calibrate back and and set the track? Then when you first, you know, did you start with drawings, or how did you first get into art, and what age? Oh, sure. Well, I come from an artistic family. My um, parents both artistic as um, is my aunt and so I was exposed to art at a really young age and I was always encouraged to draw so you know anytime I'd have the TV on or just kind of you know fill in time after school I'd be drawing so um, my dad would take us to museums my mom too Um, they would you know try to expose us to as much culture as possible so it was always kind of encouraged which was nice I think Mm -hmm. you know I had the benefit of that I know a lot of artists don't you know parents can be kind of worried right about you know parents just don't understand <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah they can be kind of worried about you know their career choices um with right, the, right. The, the art but um yeah so um i started out with drawing you know just like markers and pencil on paper and um then i wound up you know taking it in high school and of course once you get into high school you know they get you to try a whole bunch of different mediums so that was fun right and then i wound up going to a uh, ringling school of art and design oh and wow there, yeah Sarasota, yeah, actually, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. awesome. I grew up in Sarasota, so it wasn't oh, okay. you know, right there, which was nice. And yeah. um Yeah, and there I was actually a printmaking major. I was a printmaking major oh. and a sculpture minor. I didn't know how to paint. I didn't really oh. learn how to paint in school. I was afraid of painting. Oh, that's so. interesting. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're really apt uh, re- really you know, got your kind of uh, legs drawing, um, and then you kind of sounds like through college got into a little bit more painting. Yeah, no, like when I was at Ringling, I, I took printmaking because they didn't have a drawing major at okay. Ringling, so printmaking was kind of the closest thing, and I wound up doing a lot of silk screening, but oh, no, right. I didn't start painting until I had to do it for work. Um, right. When I got out of school, I wound up moving to Orlando, and I got a job in the scenic industry, and at oh, the cool. time, what that meant is that um, uh, uh, I was working on Islands of Adventure, uh, that's oh. when that park was being built, it was like right around when I moved to Orlando, which was like... I don't know, 15, 16 years ago. Right, okay. And so I wound up getting a job um, as a scenic painter, which is basically painting the sides of the buildings and the insides of the buildings. And that's kind of how I learned how to paint. So um, I'm more or less self-taught. I'm also being taught by, you know, the other scenics I worked with. So, okay. Yeah, so. Oh, that's you know, awesome. I, I, yeah, and I, I like that. You know, a lot of um, a lot of artists throughout the years have done that, where they, you know, learned a lot just from being on the job as well as learning from being in school. Well, um, James... Yeah. It, it, it's even a, it's even a big jump, I'm sure, from you know here's the wall you're painting on to here's you know the canvas you're painting on. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, because you know we'd have these like really tight time frames with anything we were doing for work. We certainly couldn't take you know the kind of amount of time that I like to take on my personal work. Yeah. On my work, yeah, you know we have to do it pretty quickly. So I think that's kind of what got me really interested in painting for myself because I was like, wow, I'd really like to take stuff a little further. I'd like to make it a little tighter, so I kind of started doing that with my own work over the years. 
And and your work your work is just uh, just incredible. I mean the the women smoking cigarette series, um, the uh, the the cats with the uh, you know the thir- I mean everything looks so real. So you're um, you use oil or is uh, that's oil paint right? Mm-mm, it's acrylic. It's acrylic. Oh wow! See yeah, so through yeah. the okay. So yeah, well, it just has beautiful, beautiful <laughs> gloss. Yeah, it has like this beautiful yeah. gloss to it. it le- and I mean, I just can't even tell you how iconic uh, your your paintings are. So how long do these things take you? Because you said you know you like to take your time, and so like how how long um, you know does the um, uh, you know the women smoking cigarettes type of series? Is that oh, something okay. you're still working on, or is that how long do those kind of paintings <laughs> take you? <laughs> up i do a lot of pieces for um spoke art and for gauntlet gallery they're both in san francisco and they do like a lot of pop culture related shows Mm -hmm. and i always just wind up finding imagery that works for the shows um and it happens to be that a lot of women in movies smoke and i don't know if it's still the case um but in movies up until like the 90s like women were smoking a lot in movies (laughs) maybe men too so i and and it, it was a nice way to frame out the composition you know, maybe that's why they would have people doing that, just so that, you know, they had shots of people doing things while right. talking. Right. Um, but also, to clarify on the kind of paint I use, I use um, golden open acrylics. Okay. And they have a longer dry time than regular acrylics. So okay, it's so... it's like an oil paint. Oh, almost. I see. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Okay, okay. So it's a quasi-oil paint, kind of, but it's yeah, acrylic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's how you can get, like, the nice blending and stuff. You definitely... It's a lot harder to get with regular acrylics. I, I found it really difficult. When I switched to those paints, I got a mm-hmm. lot better. And mm-hmm. doing more realistic skin tones, things like that. Yeah, you're. Um, I and I think it's. Um, uh, oh boy, her name's uh, escaping me. But uh, Australian actress, uh, smoking cigarette, uh, kind. Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. that one is so incredible. Oh, thank you. I just. The, it looks so real. I mean, I just love your your style. I love the way that you you you. So, how long do those kind of things take you? Does it take you months to do that? Uh, no, you know, weeks? no. I mean, they're relatively small. Like that's a twelve by twelve inch panel. And my husband makes all my panels, so I don't paint on canvas. I paint on wood. He's oh, a cool. carpenter. Oh, He's a cool. Sculptor. Um, he makes my frames for me, too. When the Sony of my pieces that have a fancy frame, um, those are his. Oh, wow. And um, I know it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the many perks of being married to him. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, don't, I, I would say it's hard because I don't paint full time. I'm also a teacher, so it's not like okay. I just sit down and like clock in eight hours a day. Right. Necessarily. <laughs> but I would say between like. Um, Ah, maybe 20 and 40 hours, depending on the piece. Probably okay. on those ones, probably around 20 to 30 on the okay. smaller ones. Okay. But sometimes they go really fast. That one I did of Debbie Harry, um, yeah. she has that one really fast. It's nice when that happens. But yeah, it just depends. I've had paintings where I worked on a lot of So like a I, really big piece. I think I oh, cut yeah. you off. Uh, I think I cut you off when you were kind of telling a little bit behind the inspiration for some of your pieces, whether it's the women smo- smoking cigarettes or the, the, the cat kind of, uh, uh, is it, where do you kind of come up with these awesome ideas? Um, <laughs> you know, is that just how your brain works or, or you say, Hey, I, this needs to be cataloged, you know, uh, where, do, where does that kind of, um, I guess it's more ingenious, that kind of ingenious Aww. branding of your own art. Where, where does that come from? Well, like I said, um, some of the shows that I do um, have kind of some kind of loose themes built into them, which is actually kind of helpful for me because yeah. sometimes I'm at a loss. And so I kind of try to work around those themes in a way where it still looks like my stuff and kind of saying what I want to say. So um, I do a lot of paintings of Lil Bub, the internet mm-hmm, cat, mm-hmm. and um, a lot of that work um, goes right to charity. They do a lot of charity art shows that oh, raise wow. money for animal stuff. So a lot of my animal pieces are for charitable causes. Not all of them. I mean, if, you know trying to make some money as an artist right, but, right. yeah but definitely you know some of that but that, um, as far as just ideas on the non-team pieces I just go with things that I like like I did the two pieces for Game of Thrones for a show in town right. a few months ago and I'm just totally obsessed with that show and I've read yeah, all the books yeah. so it, it's you know I, I like to make art that is something that I'm into but that also like connects with other people and what their interests are and I'm a big fan of movies and TV I watch like every movie every TV show you know oh, I love that. Yeah. pop culture obsessed person and you know when I'm painting a lot of times it's nice to either have an audiobook in the background or some TV shows going 
So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, kind of that. Uh, I'm a big fan. Yeah, like a white noise. Uh, like when uh, I guess it was big in the '90s, right? Like uh, you would have the TV on, but like a radio station blasting full blast. <laughs> I was like, radio station. <laughs> the 60s, yeah. The '90s are probably the to blame for my ADD. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, for that's. Sure. That's awesome. So you, um, what kind of things with, you know, when it regards art, and we're, we're speaking with Johanna uh, O'Donnell, uh, a great artist here, uh, headquartered in Orlando, Florida. Um, Johanna, when you, um, when you think about art, are there things, because you mentioned sculpting, uh, and you're married to someone who's kind of has that sculpting background, are there, mm-hmm. are there things with art that you want to do that maybe are on the horizon for you? Anything you could share with us of, oh, I'm messing around with this, I'm messing around with that, or, or is that's there that's anything... An interesting question. Yeah, is yeah, there anything in general that you're like, question. I want to nail that before I'm off this dirt ball of an earth? <laughs> Ah, I don't know. It's really interesting. Gosh, um, I might have to take a second about that. Yeah, take um, a second. For, for sure, one of the things that I want to do is start working on like a more personal series of pieces again. I did a bunch of stuff um, for my show at Bold Hype um, up in New York in mm-hmm. uh, 2011, where they were just much more kind of not random imagery, but kind of very like more like surreal imagery, um, maybe some more kind of you know, coded imagery, then, and it was less um, straight-up portraiture, which is more okay. what we do now, even though there's still some kind of trippy stuff in there, especially a lot of the animal stuff is still pretty trippy, but I would definitely like to kind of get back to that. Um, like, a, a, like a kind of tableau-ish? Yeah, yeah, maybe just pieces that aren't so directly connected to specific um, cultural things. Like, maybe it's not specifically, oh, that's that actress in the movie and that scene. Like, I, I right. do like painting actors and Actors, mostly women. They're easier to paint. I hate to say it. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, I think for women, women are easier to paint. I don't know. But, uh, but, you know, that's what I'm thinking of is like it would be more of a subject matter thing, like pushing myself in that direction, maybe making more of a narrative piece oh. than it would be pushing um, my technique because I'm feeling pretty comfortable with my technique and, and I have in the past really pushed my technique in different directions and I really don't want to do that anymore. Um, as far as like other things to try, I like silk screening, and I've got a bunch of silk screening equipment, and I would like to oh, get cool. back to doing a series of prints. I think that would be fun. Yeah, it would be a chance to kind of put some lower cost stuff out there too, so people you know can afford any some of those pieces. Any uh, any kind of sculpting? Oh no, I hate sculpting. <laughs> I really do. I can't stand it. Oh, no, sorry. When I was in college, I did mold making, so I mostly yeah. took found objects and cast them. I do like um, casting, and I'd make like multiple things like that and um but no i really don't like sculpting um no i um am a teacher at a local university here and for one of my continuing education projects i had to make like a little sculpture a little character sculpture mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. it turned out good i mean it's fine and it's i think it's on my facebook page if you but you were like ah. see it on there. no it's, it's really not it's not my forte it, it takes a really different kind of Brain. Yeah. Sorry, my dog's barking. Oh, it's cool. Myself in the back of the house. No, Um, no. I I I appreciate the time uh, that that you're able to chat with us about this because um, I think a lot of the times, you know, what what we've always done with the show, and I I love the visual component of 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 your work because it really makes for a great episode of what we do. (laughs) You know, you have such incredible images, and and to really kind of hear and hear more and learn more about your. Um, passion and, and, and skill for the art, um, I, I think, is just uh, is just incredible. I mean, you're really you, you, you're really someone that I, I see as continuing. You, you're not completely flowered yet. I think with with oh, you. with what I'd you like have to, to offer. Going in more directions, that would be great. So yeah. I appreciate that. Well, I yeah. Well, I think, and, and again, it's not to say that you not you haven't accomplished anything because your work is so incredible. But I would, uh, you know, I, I I wanted to reach out to you and get this interview because I was like, she is just so determined to continue to make incredible things. Um, so I thank you for that. Um, oh yeah, thank you. This is this is awesome. Thank you for interviewing me. Oh my my pleasure, man. And 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 that's what I kind of want to encourage uh, you know people that are watching this. You know, go check out uh, Johanna O'Donnell. What's the best way for people to kind of get involved and get uh, connected with you? Whether they just want to go uh, peep at your work, or maybe they're like, hey, she could help us with a collaboration. Um, what's the best way for for people to do that? My um, the thing that I update the most is my Facebook um, fan page, which okay. is just 
you know, look up Johanna O'Donnell. Um, I also have a website, but it's in transition. I think I'm going to transition over to Squarespace. Okay. So that I can actually have like a merchant account. Oh, um, cool. Don't yeah. Have right now. Yeah, I thought that would, you know might be a, a good plan of attack for me. Yeah. Yeah, because. In the future. <laughs> your your stuff is so iconic, um, and, and you use a lot of iconic, um, you, you know, figures and images, and like you were saying with your portrait work. Um, do you um, does your environment kind of here in Florida? Um, do you ever get impacted by uh, wildlife? I mean, you seem to care about animals and things like that because of the charity uh, aspect that you mentioned. Um, so, so does the Florida atmosphere lend anything to inspiration for you as an artist? That's a really good question. Um, I also volunteer um, at a local dog rescue, so I try oh, to cool. do like, local charitable stuff too, not just like like you know national stuff a little closer to home but it's it's super easy i just help manage their social media and transport dogs once in a while so Aww. that's fun yeah. and but as far as uh, how florida influences my work i think florida really influences my colors i think Your absolutely I mean, I'm, oh, that's cool. I'm a native floridian i've always been here but i feel like the light in florida and yeah. the way how colorful florida is you know it yeah. just it is it's colorful and it's colorful all year long i think if i lived up north Somewhere where it's like gray. <laughs> right, I think you might. I used to work with like, <laughs> That's a cool. lot of like artists from the Pacific Northwest or up north, and it, I think right. it is different than um, Florida. I think we do tend to like really push your color scheme. I feel like a Miami artist, especially, you get some like really awesome, yeah, you know, bright art. So I, I think that'd be the main thing. I, I kind of would love to like explore doing more like kind of Florida based art, but I just don't want it to like fall into the pelican art category. <laughs> Maybe when right. I retire, that's kind of right. Yeah. Like, yeah, but yeah. I, I do think it would be interesting to kind of integrate a little bit more of that into it and kind of represent Florida. I think we get kind of a bad rap down here, but yeah, um, yeah. I think it's a beautiful state. You yeah, know? it's gorgeous. I, I like it here. I agree. I agree. Hey, um, so we'll we'll kind of wrap it up, but I wanted to ask okay. you one more question. Have you, uh, given the given the uh, given the incredible quality of your work, have you been uh, in contact or through fan boards, images, uh, you know, Twitter, anything like that? Has any uh, have any of the the people that you've done these portraits of uh, famous? Typically, um, have you heard anything back from anybody across the internet or chatter anywhere about your work or anything? Um. Yeah, yeah, and I can't remember the um, actress's name right now. I can look it up, and we can maybe edit it in. Um, but, sorry, I'm just going to go look oh, it up. Cool. But um, there's, uh, I did a piece for, um, it was for Spoke Art's Bad Dads show. It's their annual Wes Anderson show. Oh. And um, the actress that I painted, um, she bought the piece. Oh, she bought so it? That was really, really cool, yeah. Oh, it's okay. a young actress. She was like the female lead. Kara Hayward. So it's the actress Kara Hayward from okay, um, cool. Kingdom. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah, she wound up getting the piece. So that's really flattering if somebody thinks yeah. that my painting of them, you know, represented them well and, you know, was flattering. And they want to own it. Did. Yeah, and they want to yeah, own yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that's not, I would think you're going to be getting a call from Nicole Kidman, too, because that is just, I mean, she, I don't know if she could act that well, but she's incredible, you know, but you made her the way you painted her. It's like, yeah, she's a give her the Oscar now. That's, that's, a, it, oh. it's incredible. So, um, well, that was Kubrick. Kubrick was an amazing director, and he really yeah. got great performances out of her and Tom Cruise and Eyes Wide Shut. You know, he's, you kind of yeah. The master. <laughs> Well, well, you're awesome, and I appreciate what you do so much. I, I want to encourage people to go check you out. Um, so we're going to pop up and roll up all the Facebook uh, it, contact info. The best way to go like the page, go connect with her if you need uh, to uh, collaborate with her or you want to purchase uh, uh, some of these pieces of art, look for an upcoming website uh, soon. So, um, Johanna, I thank you so much for the call, for the time on the call. I love what you do, and, and please keep moving forward knowing that you are <laughs> – you are you are being seen. Your your work is incredible. Oh, thank you so much, JB. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. We've been speaking with Johanna O'Donnell, uh, a local artist here uh, out of Orlando that creates iconic images. Um, and you need to go check her out. So follow the links. Go to uh, the page. And we got one more live episode, and we're going to close out uh, our AV format. So thanks for hanging with us. Uh, keep it light. Keep it tight. <laughs>